In chemistry, or science in general, when we make a measurement, that measurement will be subject to limited accuracy and limited precision, and it's also likely to contain a small element of bias. We're going to look at these three terms in some detail to try and get an understanding of the limitations we face when making measurements. And we'll start with accuracy. The definition of accuracy is a combination of the bias and precision of a measurement procedure which reflects the closeness of a measured value to a true or accepted value. So, for example, if we agree that the length of this paper clip is 3.5 centimetres, we can refer to this measurement as being the true length or accepted value for the length of that paper clip. If somebody else comes along and measures it and gets a value of 3.5 centimetres or close to it, we would say that the measurement is accurate because it is close to the true or accepted value. If, however, somebody comes along and measured it to be 4.2 centimetres, we would say that the measurement would be inaccurate. To a certain extent, common sense is in play here. Accuracy is about how close our measured value is to the true or accepted value. Now, precision is something else, and in everyday language, we often interchange the terms accuracy and precision. In science, we need to understand the difference between the two. Accuracy refers to how close a measurement is to a true or accepted value, whereas precision describes the agreement between two or more measurements made in the same way. So, again, if we accept that 3.5 centimetres is the true or accepted value of the length of this paperclip, and we perform four measurements on that paperclip, and we get measures of 3.5 centimetres, 3.6 centimetres, 3.4 centimetres, and 3.5 centimetres, we would say that those measurements are reasonably precise. They all agree with each other to a fairly close sort of level of acceptance and tolerance. If, however, we were to measure them four times and get 2.5 centimetres, 4.6 centimetres, 3.4 centimetres, and 4.2 centimetres, we would say that those measurements are imprecise. And we say that these measurements are imprecise even if the average of those values is close to the true or accepted value. So precision is about the reproducibility of repeated measures. And so if you hear those terms, reproducible or repeated measures, they are terms that relate to the precision of measurements. Bias involves a consistent deviation of measured values from the true or accepted value. And bias is normally introduced because of systematic errors in a procedure where there is something wrong with the system of measurement that you are using. So again, if we are to accept that the paper clip is 3.5 centimetres in length, and if we imagine someone comes along and takes four repeated measures of our paper clip and gets these values, these measurements would then be considered precise because their grouping is quite close and they are reproducible. However, they all fall well short of the true or accepted value. In this case, we would say that there is a consistent and significant negative bias away from the true or accepted value. Similarly, these four measurements would also be considered precise, but they are inaccurate because there is a consistent and significant positive bias away from the true or accepted value. In both cases, it is likely that some sort of systematic error has been introduced by a poor measuring system. For example, the measuring apparatus could be poorly calibrated or could be being used incorrectly by the measurer. These three terms, accuracy, precision and bias, can be represented by this diagram here where we imagine a marksman shooting at a target. And only the bottom left hand corner here gives us the conditions for accuracy, which require the conditions of low bias and high precision. The bottom left target shows the grouping of the shots are very close together, representing high precision or high reproducibility. This marksman knows what he or she is doing. They are likely highly skilled and experienced, a condition that is often required when making accurate and precise scientific measurements. Also, all the shots hit the bullseye, which means that the sights of the gun are likely to be very well calibrated. And in measurement systems, that's exactly what we want. We want the measurement system to be well calibrated and used appropriately. If we look at the situation in the top left, this scenario is considered to be inaccurate. It has high bias with high precision. So what we've got here again is an example of a skilled marksman. The gripping of the shots is very close together. They are reproducible and therefore precise. 
but we might presume here that the gun sights are a bit off. They are not well calibrated and it's causing the marksman to hit the target consistently high and to the left of the bullseye. So, relating that back to measurement, what we've got here is a poorly calibrated measuring system causing systematic errors resulting in high bias. We still have a skilled measurer with high reproducibility, but this situation is still considered to be inaccurate due to the high bias. Now an example of this that you may be familiar with in terms of measuring length is the use of nylon measuring tapes to measure the length or distance of something. And quite often, through repeated uses, these nylon measuring tapes become stretched and so there becomes a problem with the system of measuring. The nylon measuring tape on the bottom is no longer well calibrated because it has been stretched. So, for example, if we were to measure this paper clip with the top measuring tape, we would see that we would measure it to be approximately 4.5 centimetres. But if we were to measure it with the bottom measuring tape, which has been stretched, we would see that the measured value would be approximately 3 centimetres in length. Clearly, there is a significant bias introduced here, a significant negative bias that is brought about by the poorly calibrated stretched measuring tape. The situation at the top right is also considered inaccurate because we have a scenario where we have a high bias and low precision, exactly the opposite of what we need to be accurate. We could consider this as an example where we have an unskilled marksman, the gripping of the shots is not well grouped, and poorly calibrated gun sights, the shots are all high and to the right of the bullseye, meaning that there is significant bias. Relating this back to measurements, this could be an example of a poorly calibrated measurement system, creating systematic errors leading to high bias, and an unskilled measurer not capable of making reproducible measurements leading to low precision. The lack of precision could also be due to the fact that the measurement system is working at the limit of its capabilities and at the limit of its resolution, introducing random errors that are very difficult to fix, even for a skilled measurer. Finally, the situation at the bottom right hand side is also inaccurate. This is representing a situation of low bias, which is a good thing, but poor reproducibility or low precision. We have a situation where the gun sights are likely well calibrated, but the marksman isn't well skilled and is basically shooting randomly all over the place. Relating this back to measuring, we would say that this is a situation indicative of a well calibrated measuring system, but perhaps an unskilled measurer because of the lack of reproducibility, or perhaps the system is being used at the limit of its resolution and random errors are introduced. So, in summary, the conditions for accuracy shown at the bottom left require low bias and high precision. We require low bias by having a well calibrated measuring system and it's got to be used appropriately where we do not introduce any personal bias by incorrect use. The measurements also need to have high precision, they need to be reproducible and a skilled measurer needs to be able to make those measurements in exactly the same way to get very precise, reproducible and therefore accurate measurements.